Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to the 10th annual Utica College Pioneer Hall of Fame induction ceremony and senior student athlete recognition. I'm Jason Pack, news anchor at WKTV News Channel 2 in Utica, and it's my great privilege to be your master of ceremonies here tonight. Now, before I begin, I would like to recognize our presenting sponsors, BSN Sports, as well as Adirondack Bank, and primary sponsor, Duply Envelopes and Graphics, for their generous support of this evening's ceremony. We are joined this evening by several distinguished guests, so when I call your name, if you could please stand and be recognized. Previous Pioneer Hall of Fame inductees who are with us this evening. DJ Carstensen, Pioneer Hall of Fame class of 2009. Harold T. Clark, Jr., class of 2009. And Shannon Rowacek, class of 2008. We are honored to be joined by the college's board of trustee members who are in attendance tonight. And I would also like to welcome the senior student athletes in the audience as well as their families, guests, and coaches are here. And last, but certainly not least, let me extend a very special welcome to our honored guests, the Pioneer Hall of Fame class of 2017. Tonight, we gather to celebrate and enshrine four individuals for their unique backgrounds, talents, and accomplishments, as well as for their shared commitment to the spirit and values of athletic competition at Utica College. At this time, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce a gentleman who embraces and promotes these values every single day, Athletic Director Dave Fontaine. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the 10th anniversary of the Utica College Hall of Fame and Student Athlete uh, Recognition Awards. Uh, a lot of what Jason said, I'm going to repeat a little bit of that because I don't think you can say thank you enough. There you go. To, uh, first of all, to our Board of Trustees that are here in attendance tonight, to uh, President Casamento, our senior leadership from the college. Uh, in the Utica College Athletic Association. We can't thank you enough for your support throughout the year. So uh, without you, our efforts uh, can't come to fruition. So thank you so much. Uh, again, a special thanks to our lead sponsors, Duply, Adirondack Bank, and BSN Sports. Again, your commitment and support to events like this make things like this possible, so we, we thank you again. And, uh, you know, we have the luxury of walking in to the Athletic Center, and for those of you who come in here every day, you see it as a gymnasium, and then you see it kind of transformed. And that doesn't happen without the efforts from our facilities group, our Office of Sports Information, the Office of Advancement and Marketing, and also Sodexo for putting on a great meal. So I know a lot of times that goes unnoticed, but I certainly want to recognize their efforts. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations to the Hall of Fame class of 2017. Tom, Katie, Marcus, and Joe, you're getting the highest honor that can be given to you from Utica College Athletics. Your dedication and support over the years, your commitment to Utica College, and your accomplishments both on and off the field uh, are truly inspirational to all of us. You epitomize what it means to be a pioneer, and we're looking forward to seeing and hearing from you up on stage shortly. To the senior student athletes and your families and guests, thank you for your hard work, dedication, support, and commitment to Utica College and our athletic programs. We know how difficult it is to balance academic and athletics and achieve in both, so we thank you for everything you've done. Please know that you're leaving Utica College a much better place than when you first stepped on campus. And remember, you will always be a pioneer, and you're always welcome back home here at Utica College.
At this time, I'd like to share a few of your accomplishments over the past year, and I would ask that you, you just hold your applause until, until I'm all finished uh, uh, sharing. Our football team posted a 7-3 and three regular season record and qualified for an ECAC bowl game for the second time in the past three years. Men's cross country runner Mitchell Marlowe was named Empire 8 Rookie of the Year. Our women's hockey team went to the ECAC tournament for the fifth time in the 16 years of our program. Our men's hockey team won the ECAC West regular season and advanced to the ECAC West championship for the third time in the last four years. Nick Gamble and Clarence Skipper qualified for the NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships and both became All-Americans. The men's basketball team qualified for the Empire 8 basketball tournament as the number three seed and junior Ivan Iton was named the Empire 8 Defensive Player of the Year. Freshman diver Matt, uh, Matt Patton was named Empire 8 Diver of the Year. The men's outdoor track and field team became Empire 8 champions for the second consecutive year in just the eighth year of program existence. Nick Gamble is on pace to qualify for the NCAA Track and Field Outdoor Championships. The men's lacrosse team posted a program best, 10 wins. Baseball, who's on the road today, needs to get one more win in its next three games to qualify for the Empire 8 tournament for the second consecutive year. And most importantly, these last two bullets I have here, 13 teams posted a GPA of 3.0 or better with 23 student athletes achieving a 4.0 GPA. And both the valedictorian and salutatorian are part of the UC athletic family. Melanie Carlson was a junior college transfer and a member of the women's soccer team before her playing career was cut short because of an injury. She had a perfect 4.0. And Mikhail Brzezinski, a member of our men's hockey team, had a 3.0 GPA over the last four years. And something really special about Mikhail He's actually deferred his acceptance to Yale Law School to finish. He has one more year of eligibility with hockey, so he'll be back to play men's ice hockey. So congratulations. <laughs> I have to say this is my most favorite event of the year. I can remember when we first started celebrating our teams, and we used to meet after each of the seasons in the fall, winter, and spring, and we would have a small gathering with uh, you know, great pizza and ice cream and the library concourse. So we've come quite far since those days. Uh, we appreciate you all being here and sharing to the student athletes that are here that are graduating. We wish you best of luck and uh, we hope to see you back on campus soon. And I will say at the end of this event, there's another event that's gonna be taking place in the Pioneer Cafe that everybody's welcome to. So uh, we'll hope to see you there. So thank you and enjoy your evening. Thank you, Dave. And now, could we please have former cross country and track field and field coach Jason Rose, as well as current coach Eric Parker, join me on stage to help present our first inductee. Please direct your attention to the video screens for comments from current Utica College cross country and track and field coach Eric Parker. I'm Eric Parker. I'm the men's and women's head track and field and cross country coach. I was Joe's hurdles coach while he was here in school. Joe graduated high school. He went into the military for a couple of years. Then he went to uh, Mohawk Valley Community College, got his associate's degree done there. He went back and actually served overseas for two years. And then in January of 2011, um, he came into Utica and we started working um, as soon as we possibly could. And he was actually a, a, an athlete that texted me at 5.45 in the morning, that first day that we were able to work with each other. And uh, he's like, hey coach, you up? Let's practice. What do we got going on? And uh, we, we spent two days that first week going over some hurdles. I asked him, Joe, do you want to compete this weekend? Well, duh. Like, we don't have very, very long until Empire 8, so let's go. Um, we competed that first weekend, and I just happened to be standing right next to one of his main competitor's parents. And he runs that, that first race of that 55-meter hurdles, 
and he just barrels through every single hurdle. Boom, boom, boom. And those parents I'm standing next to, they're like, who is this old man? <laughs> uh, this guy looks like he's 40 years old. I'm bald, he's got tattoos, he's a big guy, and just barreling through. And um, come to the end of the race, uh, he ends up winning it, goes into finals, wins that, and that's how Joe started to make a name amongst uh, the track and field community. With this being the eighth year of the men's and women's track and field programs, uh, everything that we have accomplished up to this point would not have been possible without Jason Rose and Joe Prukno uh, being at Utica. Uh, Joe was that first big fish for us. Um, you know, he kind of helped set the culture. You know, that, that hard work, that determination, that mindset that he brought is something that everyone strives to be. You know, hey, I want to be like Joe. I, I got to do this to be like Joe. And you know, I, I'm able to draw on those experiences and everything from Joe when I talk to recruits and to my young athletes now. Uh, if they can be half as determined as Joe, we're gonna have a really, really good team. Joe's success is attributed to a couple things, his hard work and his determination. I've never had one athlete that has done everything that Joe has done. Joe is a four-time national qualifier, three-time All-American, just missed that fourth national qualifier by two thousandths of a second. Um, he held the Empire 8 conference record in the 60 hurdles and the 55 meter hurdles. Uh, he was a four-time NYS CTC uh, champion. Joe currently holds the school records in the 55 meter hurdles, the 60 meter hurdles, the 110 meter hurdles, and the four by one. He was a part of the 2011 ECAC four by 100 meter relay champion. He was the program's first national qualifier and first All-American. Joe graduated in 2012 and is now a, a police officer in the Rome Police Department. It is my honor to induct Joe Prukno into the Pioneer Hall of Fame. At this time, I would like to welcome to the stage Joe Prukno. really know what to say. That's, that's uh, an amazing speech to follow up. Um, I prepared something, so uh, here we go. All right, allow me to begin uh, with my heartfelt congratulations to all the incredible individuals who are being honored here this evening. Uh, I say to each of you, thank you for your extraordinary talent uh, and the contributions to Utica College. Uh, to be able to, uh, to share this momentous um, occasion with you is, humbling, is a, a humbling experience. Uh, I am truly honored to be accepted into the UC Hall of Fame as a first track and field athlete. Uh, and for this to be even possible, there's a few people I have to thank. Um, but first, let's start with a fun story. Uh, Mr. Parker already covered that story. I believe it was a 5.30 a.m. phone call, not a text. Uh, and when I contacted Parker, it was simply, Park down. Uh, I, I felt like I woke up a bear during hibernation season. Um, so I said, hey, listen, it's 30 minutes to Utica. I live in Rome. Uh, practice at 6 a.m. How does that sound? He goes, all right. From then on, uh, our coach-athlete bond was almost inseparable. Um, before I get into Coach Park, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Spartano for uh, allowing us to have the track and field program, because he was the one who had the ideas of this. Uh, within, within one week, we went to um, the Chicagoland Invitational um, in, in Chicago. And it was one, at that time, it was one of the biggest uh, track and field meets in Division Three. So for us to be able to travel in a one week's notice and go race against the top competitors is kind of like uh, going to a mini national event uh, before even making it to national. So the experience that Mr. Spartano allowed us to have um, was truly amazing. Uh, the second person I need to thank is Mr. Dave Fontaine, who we all met today. Uh, he gave the, the, the track and field program the ability to succeed by building the biggest and best indoor track and field facility with the top of the line equipment that our track and field athletes and also all athletes on Utica College could have. Um, because of, because of this effort, I believe this is one of the main reasons why Utica College track and field has won two Empire 8 championships back to back. Uh, one person who I dearly need to thank is Coach Eric Parker. Uh, he brought such a great quality of training from Iowa State to Utica College. The individualized, specialized training plan Coach Parker created allowed me to develop into one of the best short sprint hurdlers 
in the country at the Division III level. Coach Parker showed me what it's like to be a coach who truly cares about his athletes. He sacrificed so much of his personal time, I really don't think I could ever repay him. Um, I remember uh, a couple trips we made out to Syracuse University. We were uh, going out to Manly Fieldhouse. They had some open hours. What did he do? He, he drove in from Herkimer, picked me up in Rome, drove that hour to Syracuse just so we can train on the indoor track. Um, I feel like this was one of the biggest reasons why my senior season was such a success. <clears throat> uh, again, I told you about that favorite memory with Coach Parker in the morning. Uh, I, I was really wish you guys could hear them on the other end of the phone. Uh, there was also another memory I had with Coach Parker. It was in my junior season. We raced uh, in the ECAC championships um, down in Manhattan. Uh, I was talking to him before. I said, Coach, listen, I feel really good today. You know, you wake up, it's one of those days where you feel like you're going to have one of the best races of your life. Um, I believe every track and field athlete has one race that defines their career, and this was it for me. So we get up, there's, uh, I believe there's, what, two or three defaults, so the lane goes from eight to five, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, you know, that's not going to distract me, we're going to get after it today. And uh, we went out, we raced, and uh, the time of the 55 hurdles placed me at fourth in the country, so instead of stopping, catching my breath like most ath uh, excuse me, athletes would do, I come down the track, I jump into Coach Parker's arms. So. Just picture this real quick for me, a 24-year-old man running down the track with his spikes on in spandex, jumping in Coach Parker's arms, and he just embraces it like it's the best thing that's ever happened. <laughs> uh, there's one more person I really need to dedicate some time thanking today, and that's obviously Coach Jason Rose. Um, I'll say this many times, he is simply the best thing that ever happened to Utica College track and field, so thank you, Mr. Rose. Um, I first met Rose after speaking with my cousin, Michael Breitch, who was at the time the cross country head coach. Um, he was telling me how UC wanted to bring a track and field program around while I was running at uh, MVCC. And so I, I was kind of interested about that. So as I was competing at some local meets, uh, I noticed this UC coach around, around the track. We start talking and he introduces himself as, as Jason Rose. Um, and he was explaining to me how UC would be the, the best place for me to uh, run and it would be good for me athletically and uh, academically. But here I am as I'm listening to him, I'm thinking, he's selling me this school that wants a track program without an outdoor track. There's no indoor track facility. There's not even a building big enough to put five hurdles up or 10 hurdles up, so how can I train this way? I, at the time, I was talking to a, a used car salesman. It was, uh, it was one of those experiences you just, you just had to be there for. Um, another one of my favorite memories with, uh, with Coach Rose is we were actually in California at my last, my last event. Um, we were getting there, we drove, the hotel was about maybe 20 minutes away, 30 minutes away at the most. Uh, I, have, I have a pair of orange and blue Puma socks that I love to wear when I race. That's the only sh uh, pair of socks I can, I can wear to race in. I get there, I'm warming up, I'm getting stretched out by athletic trainers in the college in California, and I'm looking for my track bag. All right, time to put the, uh, the, the socks on and get ready to race. We're racing in 45 minutes, we gotta do a hurdle drills. I look in, I can't find, I can't find my socks. I simply look to my left like this, I get that look, like, no, I'm not going back to the hotel from Coach Rose. He's like, are you serious? So he made a 45-minute trip down to 25 minutes. Needless to say, with five to 10 minutes left, I had my socks. I put them on, and that would probably arguably be the best, uh, best race I put together in a 14-4 and finished sixth in the country in that race. So it wouldn't have happened without his uh, persistence to grab me my magic socks. Uh, during the next two years, Coach Rose, Coach Parker, and I, when I first got here, uh, we traveled to California, Ohio, Illinois, Iowa, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, every college in, in New York State and New York City. Uh, a good thing about um, a small college like this is I was actually able to meet Coach Rose and Coach Parker's family. We sat down around the dinner table with them. I was, I was allowed to learn about their lives and, and how they lived. It was a great experience to be around. Uh, you're not going to get that at a lot of bigger schools. Uh, I can honestly say that Utica College and the sport of track and field has prepared me for the future. Uh, Rose and Parker both have inspired me continu to continue doing what I love, which is now coach track and field at a risk high school. Um, I'm so passionate about this sport, and uh, my hope is one day that I can be the coach that they were to me. Uh, being an alumni here at UC is, is more than just graduating and moving forward. You're a part of a prestigious family that is always here to welcome you, uh, and they're always looking out for you. To this day, Coach Rose, Coach Park, and I are very close friends. Uh, they were a part of my wedding. They were the first people I called when my daughter Finley was born. Um, I can't thank them enough for the years of hard work and dedication they gave to me. I would like to also voice my sincere appreciation to those people who also helped mentor, inspire, believe, and guide me through UC while I was here. That would include the Utica College professors, the training staff, who I bothered probably four hours a day before and after practice. Um, 
I would also like to thank my family for being here and my beautiful wife, Michelle, and our daughter, Finley, uh, for their continued love and support. Um, in conclusion, I, I, there's so much I could say, but so little time. Uh, I salute all of you and everyone in this organization that have led me to become the man I am today, and I look forward to seeing the continued success at Utica College. At this time, could we please have New York Mills High School physical education teacher and field hockey co coach, Andrea Jekon, join me on the stage as we help present our second inductee. My name is Andrea Jekon. I'm a physical education teacher at New York Mills. I've been there for 19 years, and I, was, I coach Katie in field hockey and basketball. I received an email from Katie Kutash um, about being inducted into the Utica Hall of Fame. I got chills. Uh, I was so happy for her because again, she is one that does not want to be honored. She kind of wants to just fly under the radar, radar. And just to have again, your athlete that you coached in high school carry through with four years of college and be so successful, um, I, I was thrilled. I was thrilled for her. I was, I was thrilled for the team she played on because Obviously, uh, the, you do things as, as a team, and I'm sure Katie would say that, and they helped her become a great player. And um, just to watch her here, too, locally at Utica College is, is, is great. Katie um, was a unbelievable athlete. Um, she was a quiet athlete, so you didn't know that she was around. But as soon as she snuck behind the girl, hit that ball in the goal, you knew she was around because they, you heard that huge bang against the, the, field, the ho field hockey goal. Um, she had unbelievable speed, and she was a true leader. She was very humble. You didn't know, again, you did not know she was around, but uh, she led by example on and off the field. And, um, you know, she was part of 16 graduating seniors that I had, and we were very, very successful. As, as a physical educator for so many years, you have certain groups that go by, and this was one of the groups that was probably one of my favorite, and, and certainly Katie was one of my favorites. I know that she always uh, practiced very hard uh, around the goal. She would always uh, you know, practice her hard shots, and you know, I think she was just a natural athlete, to tell you honestly. And I know she put in a lot of extra time after, uh, after hours, um, and also through college. Uh, watching her go through Utica College for the four years was unbelievable. And she was obviously very successful at Utica College. Katie was the three-time Empire Eight uh, first team selection. She was also Rookie of the Year, and she was also Player of the Year. Katie was uh, all region selection, and she also was ranked, is ranked the top five of all leading scorers at Utica College. Katie also was the winner of the Dick Miller Award at Utica College. As a high school coach, that is your dream, is to see one of your athletes go through the and be successful in college, which she was. It's a thrill. It's a thrill to have a local athlete play at a local college. It is my honor to induct Katie Kutash into the Pioneer Hall of Fame. At this time, I would like to welcome to the stage Katie Kutash. So I just want to say this is such an honor being in front of all of you tonight. I want to congratulate Joe, Tom, Marcus. Congratulations to you guys. When I was a senior here at UC, a couple of my teammates, Shannon and Carla, which Shannon happens to be Marcus's wife, 
were inducted into uh, the Hall of Fame. And I thought, that's so awesome. I shared a field with them. First, I would like to thank Coach Chaffon for inducting me tonight. I remember that summer going into seventh grade where I'd first learn how to play field hockey. And after that first season, I realized I fell in love with the game, playing on that bumpy grass. I want to thank you for your hard work and dedication. I know that you had extra 20 daughters to look out for, and we greatly appreciated that. I'm very thankful for my teammates throughout the years, from high school to college, which Michelle, Joe's wife, played with me from the start and into college. We're all so lucky to have shared the laughs, the cheers, and even sometimes the tears with our families and our UC family. Those memories are something special that no one can take away from us. I don't know if Pat Mahalko is here tonight, but I want to thank her for creating a field hockey program that has evolved so much through the years. I remember coming to field hockey camp when I was in eighth grade and thinking how awesome that'd be. They have turf. <laughs> when at, where am I going? <laughs> I also want to recognize the coaching staff of UC for sharing the love of the game with me and helping me achieve my goals. Most importantly, I want to thank my family and tell them how thankful I am for them. There aren't enough words to express the appreciation for what you've done for me through the years and get me to where I am today. All the miles that you traveled, all over New York, Denver, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, just to catch a 6 p.m. game meant so much to me. I hope that one day I'll be able to show the love and support to my kids as you've done for me and continue to do so. Last but not least, I want to congratulate the seniors. You're all so fortunate to call yourself pioneers. Thank you. At this time, could we please have former Utica College student athlete and current Utica College football defensive coordinator, Will Clough, join me on stage to help present our third inductee. Hi, my name is Will Clough. I'm currently a defensive coordinator for Utica College football. I had the honor of being a four-year alum of the football program as well. In my time playing, I got to meet Marcus Maroney and spend some time as a teammate. I was also fortunate enough to have my first year coaching crossover into his senior season. There's a few things that people would find interesting about Marcus Maroney as a player here. One, uh, he definitely was ahead of his time. He was a player that was a superior athlete showing up to a very young program. In his freshman year, we were only in the second varsity season of, of the program's history. And he quickly found his way to the field during camp. When it got to time to compete in drills, uh, he showed that he had the ability to be a varsity player immediately, especially in terms of the talent level that we had in the program. And his ability to play at a high level, I think also made people around him raise, raise their level expectations for themselves. Marcus also showed his ability to adapt and improvise as a player well, he did have multiple defensive coordinators, I believe up to three in his time here, and had to learn new schemes, had to learn a new vernacular, had to learn a new system, year in and year out, did wind up playing multiple positions. With that being said, being on the Empire 8 first team all-conference list at multiple positions uh, is, is quite the accomplishment. Going along with that, uh, I've had the fortunate opportunity to coach now going into my 11th season. In my first season, Marcus was in his senior year finishing playing. As time's gone on, I've gotten to know other coaches in our league and 
just like any coach in, in any sport, you talk about the history of your league, you talk about the history of your program. And something that consistently comes up with other coaches in our league is the fact that Marcus wasn't only a good player, he was a great player. Other coaches knew where he was at. Other coaches had to plan around him. And people really thought when they were getting ready for a game, where is Marcus going to be at? How is he going to impact the game? How can we work to keep him out of our game plan? Uh, when you hear that as a coach, uh, that's like the ultimate compliment that you can pro I could possibly pass on and give back to Marcus. Marcus Maroney in his time here as defensive player really helped pave the way for future defensive players and our expectations that we hold our players to now. He was two-time first team all-conference Empire 8. He was two-time ECAC Northwest selection. And probably the height of his accomplishments was in his junior year when he was 11th in the country in tackles and was selected at D3Football.com third team all defensive player. It's an absolute honor to induct Marcus Maroney into the Pioneer Hall of Fame. At this time, please help me in welcoming to the stage Marcus Maroney. hear me? Okay. Um, first and foremost, I just want to congratulate Katie, Joe, and Thomas. Um, just want to say job well done. Um, this is definitely a, an honor. I've never seen it coming. Um, of course, it's a, it's a dream, just like it should be for any student athlete, um, but I really was never expecting this. Um, some people I'd like to thank, Coach Pluff, uh, for being a dear friend of mine over the years. Um, my dad and my brother, who continue to inspire me to this day. Uh, Brian Rochak, my father-in-law. Uncle Gary, Aunt Karen, Aunt Doreen, for all, for all the love and support you have given me over the years. And of course, my wife, who I just don't thank enough. The person I'd like to thank the most is Kim Rochak, my mother-in-law, who passed away three years ago. Without her, I just don't think this moment would be possible. And I would like to thank Utica College the institution itself for helping me become the man I am today. Utica College will always have a special place reserved in my heart. Some of my greatest life moments and lessons took place here. I was tasked with leading a young team within a young program. I knew winning games was something that we would prepare for, but the likelihood that, that, would, the likelihood that we would achieve that goal was far and in between. I quickly committed myself to not only playing for my teammates, but for those that came before me and for those that would come long after me. I wasn't playing for the year 2005, 2006, and 2007. I was playing for the year 2017. I wasn't worried about winning then because I knew we would win now. It was the reasons we were playing for and I understood it. It was bigger than me. It was bigger than my teammates. It was about playing for the future. It was about playing as hard as you can, regardless how difficult it was, regardless who your opponent is. It's about chasing ball carriers down the 50 yards down the field. It was about never giving up. It was about hoping a special coach will come one day. It was about ensuring those that came after me would have an experience I knew I would never have. I did my best to push my teammates to a place they have never been before. I did my best to bring the best out of them in a difficult time. I did my best to show them we were winning as individuals and as a team. It was just difficult to see at the moment. And as an end result, the program brought the best out of me. In the end, I was contacted by the Arizona Cardinals, Cincinnati Bengals, Philadelphia Eagles, New York Giants, and the Buffalo Bills. Opportunities one can only dream of. I ended up trying out for the Buffalo Bills had an amazing, amazing experience, and I am forever grateful for Utica College. Outside of athletics, I was part of the Human Resource Management Club, along with the Marketing and Business Management Club. 
Through these associations, I had the great opportunity to gain real world experience by visiting some of the local businesses with my professors and classmates and providing SWOT analysis and financial budgeting consultation before I graduated. I had Professor Jaikon for accounting. I missed a couple assignments and I wasn't exactly an active participant in class. <clears throat> One day he pulled me to the side and asked me if I played football. I said yes. He said, aren't you a captain? You know, like a leader? I said yes. He said, well, you missed a couple assignments. Haven't seen you raise your hand yet. Don't see any leaders in this classroom. Leaders don't lead when they feel like it. Then he walked away. I sat there in an empty classroom for an hour just thinking about what was just said to me. Then I opened up my notebook and began doing my homework. I ended up working my butt off and receiving an A in this class. I currently supervise two assistant directors and two admissions counselors in my current position at Western New England University. I also run the ambassador program with 25 student workers reporting to me. I was recently informed that one of the assistant directors shared with someone in the office that they find working under me the most challenging yet rewarding thing they have ever done. I was recently informed that one of my lead ambassadors shared she feels like she can work anywhere and she is just going into her senior year. Last year, I turned on a higher level position because I felt it wasn't the right opportunity for me. If there's anything I can leave with you graduating seniors, it's this. It will be up to you to figure out how to transition your competitiveness from athletics to your professional lives. But once you do, you will find that the same success you've experienced here will follow you wherever you go. You know, growing up, uh, I'm one of 12 from a small town of Lockport, New York. A dream like this seems vaguely ludicrous and unattainable, but I can tell you uh, this moment right now is directly connected to some of my childhood imaginings. And if there's anyone out there who's on the downside of an advantage and is relying purely off of courage, it's possible. So this is for all the players that came before me this is for all the teammates I've had the great honor of playing with. This is for all the players I will never have the opportunity to play with. This is for Blaze, this is for Coach Pluck, and this is for Kim. I love you and I miss you. Thank you very much. And now for our final inductee, at this time, could we please have former Utica College baseball coach, Rich Joseph, and former Utica College student athlete, Tony Joseph, join me on stage to help present our final inductee. Uh, my name is Richard Joseph. I was the baseball coach at UC. Uh, this is my brother, Tony. Tony was a football player and my baseball player at UC. Uh, I was, had the privilege of working with uh, Tom in baseball. When he got the ball and he took the mound, all of our players and myself included knew that we could beat anybody we played. He was the best pitcher on the field for either team. He could beat anybody from Siena to Lemoyne, uh, Ithaca, you name all those good baseball teams, uh, programs at that time. There was nothing else in his mind but to strike out everybody he faced. And occasionally he'd, he'd miss up a little bit and the ball get away from where he wanted it to go and somebody might get a base hit. And, and he, he wouldn't blow his stack, but he, you could see him getting a little tougher and I didn't want to be the guy coming in to the plate next after that because he saw nothing. <laughs> it went way by him. Uh, so that's the kind of player he was. Um, and when he wasn't pitching, he was playing the outfield as well as anybody we had on the team. Uh, he could run down the ball. He had, obviously had a gun. Uh, he had great foot speed. 
that he anticipates things before they happen. Um, and then if you get him on uh, batting, again, an outstanding hitter, went with the pitches, had great foot speed. Uh, he'd be a guy you want in a situation where you needed a base hit. And so he had, he had it all. And uh, I think all of his uh, teammates uh, understood that and uh, tried to uh, emulate him as much as they can. They, they played harder when Tom was in the game than if he wasn't in the game. They just wanted to try to uh, uh, not match him as so much as to uh, show that they really wanted him to win and they were going to do all they can to help him win. I really paid attention to the Utica College baseball, saw the games, read the, you know, the scores, and looked at it. And when uh, Rich told me and my brother John said, hey, you got to look, come and see if he's going to pitch us. Come and see Tommy when he pitches. Yeah, this guy must be pretty good. So I went and I saw him, and it was amazing. And you can tell, you can tell when someone's above the rest in terms of their ability to be able to do what Tom did. Just a few of his, his statistics, because uh, they are impressive, and I know baseball is a statistics sport. But just take, take a look at this. First five, uh, he had seven victories his first seven times out. His ERA in 1974 was .90. For those of you that aren't baseball fans, that's less than one run per nine innings. His career was 1.50, which is amazing. His career uh, record was 13 and four. Uh, in addition to that, he had 12 strikeouts against Hobart. You know, a great, you know, a great uh, outing. And believe it or not, he had two no hitters, three one hitters out of those 13 wins. So Tom was a dominant pitcher. When you look at athletes and you look at people uh, at a Division three level, getting drafted number one by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, that's quite an accomplishment. He, he was driven. He's self-driven. He's self-taught. Uh, you almost couldn't tell, say, say too many things to him because he did so many things right. And, and even if it was only the way he thought it should be done, uh, it turned out to be the proper way. So it is my honor to induct Tom Fistimo into the Pioneer Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tom Fistimo. That was quite a speech, Marcus. Congratulations, man. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank Richie Joseph. Rich was my coach. He was my mentor. At times, he was my boss. He allowed me to be his assistant coach when I came back from playing professional baseball. Um, but most importantly to me, Rich has been a great friend for more than four decades. And I really appreciate everything that Rich has done for me. Um, I also want to thank Tony Joseph. Tony went back into the ancient history and the archives to, to, to um, get all the statistics that, that you saw there. I didn't remember any of that. Tony went and did that, and, and he was uh, instrumental in my induction. So I really appreciate your efforts, Tony. Um, I know uh, Doc's not here today, Doc Spartano. I want to thank Doc. Doc recruited me. He was my freshman baseball coach. And he gave me the opportunity to come here to Utica College. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't recognize my golf coach, Tom Huggins. Tom, Tom isn't with us anymore, um, but Tom was a wonderful man. And uh, for those of you that knew Tom, he was quite a character, and he will definitely be missed. Um, after over 40 years, my memory of the games has diminished. But what I do remember about my time here at Utica College is the wonderful friendships and relationships that I had with my teammates and my classmates. And I am so fortunate today. I, I haven't lived in, in New York State for 25 years. I haven't lived in Utica for f almost 40 years since, since I left school. But I am so fortunate to have good, good friends and teammates that are here today, and I just want to recognize them. Um, there's baseball players. Tom Everson played four years of baseball here at Utica College. Mark Salisbury played four years of baseball at Utica College. John Bialek was four years of golf. Tom Gajawa was four years of golf. And Tony preceded me here at Utica College. But again, Tony was a, a golf and or a baseball and football star here at Utica College. And I am so happy and I'm so thankful that you guys took the time to come here to um, 
be here for me in the in the celebration. Um, also, I want to uh, table eleven. I've got I've got some uh, some guys that are, were my um, childhood friends, and we played sports together growing up. And I, I really appreciate you guys coming here tonight too. It, it really means a lot to me. Um, the one of the greatest things in my life happened to me right here on this campus. I met a girl, not a girl, I met, I met the girl. And that girl's my wife, Sue. We've been married now for 35 years. We've got four wonderful daughters. <laughs> and, and, and that relationship and that, our friendship all started right here on this campus. So for your seniors, I know that graduation is right around the corner and that right now you have the same mixed emotions that we had when we were graduating. You're thrilled that you have no more final exams or term papers to do, but you're concerned about what the future holds. And you're also concerned about leaving those friendships behind that you've made here at Utica College. But let me assure you one thing. The friendships and the relationships that you've made here, those friendships with your, with your classmates and your teammates or your coaches, those friendships will last a lifetime. And I'm living proof of that. So when graduation occurs, don't be sad that your time here at Utica College has ended. Be happy and smile for the wonderful experiences that you've had, for the tremendous foundation that you've established for your careers going forward, and most importantly, for those lifelong friendships and relationships that you've made. Uh, to Katie and Marcus and Joe, you guys are studs, unbelievable. I am so proud to be in your company. Uh, and, and finally, for me, to the selection committee, I, I am humbled and I'm honored that you selected me to be a member of the Utica College Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined tonight by an extraordinary group of senior student athletes. From overcoming adversity to standing tall in both victory and defeat, they are a remarkable class of athletes, and even more so, a remarkable class of people. We would like to take this opportunity tonight to recognize these men and women for their amazing and inspiring contributions to our campus. As I call your name, would each coach and senior please come join me on the stage and be recognized. If you could please hold your applause until the last name for each team is called, we would appreciate it. We start with field hockey. Head coach Nikki Kiefer, Rachel Scaramuzina, Tori Couture, and Sarah Hennessy. Women's tennis, head coach John Nigro, Anastasia Fitzpatrick, Gabriella Morale, and Lulu Zhang. Men's cross country, track and field. Head coach Eric Parker. 
Kyle Carr, Jason Ortiz, Eric Winberg, John Hoover, Sam Kazmarek, and Christian St. Amour. Women's cross country track and field. Head coach Eric Parker, Mackenzie Hoven, Jade Jenkins, Gabrielle McQueen, and Abby Scheibel. Men's soccer, head coach Brian Marcantonio, Joseph Hunter, Matt Belgen, Marcel Dupuy, Patrick Claffey, and Owen Gillum. Women's soccer, head coach Eileen Blumenauer, Jamie Enders, Brianna Marfe, Elizabeth Begum, Ziamara Rodriguez, Sierra McElhaney, and Sarah Kubera. Football, head coach Blaise Faggiano, Jared Veniquez, Ryan Burnett, Joan Wilson, Joe Castellito, James Murphy, Tyler DePasquale, Austin Berninger, Peter Muller, Nicholas Ruzzese, and Dan Pamlaney. Volleyball, head coach, Eris Bird. And volleyball's lone senior this year, Brandy Blazik. <laughs> Women's basketball, head coach, Michelle Davis. And team manager, Eric Johnson. Women's Hockey, Head Coach Dave Clausen, Jane Pagano, Gabriel Schnepp, Emily Coop, Kiara Gowen, and Victoria Pelton. Men's Hockey, Head Coach Gary Heenan, Kevin Kirisitz, Easton Powers, Luke Bobey, Connor Schmidt, Riley Egan, and Thomas Maxim.
Men's Swim and Dive, Head Coach Aaron Knight, Sam Benson, Tommy Carlson, Chris Dayette, Chris Halsey, Men's Lacrosse, Head Coach Mike Parnell. Tyler Nicholas. Mitch Sabilo. Ryan Jordan. Rusty Dessert. Brickman House. Liam Wheatley. Hunter Isaac and Parker Smith. Women's Lacrosse, Head Coach Kristen St. Hilaire, Amanda Krusky, Dewasher Rocky Barnes, Rebecca Plunkett, Maggie Nodder, Sarah Hennessy, and Colleen Dowling. Softball, head coach Pat Minio, and our lone softball senior this year, Cassidy Ogren. Unfortunately, the following graduating seniors could not be here with us this evening, so we'll recognize them at this point. Shannon Fillmore for women's tennis. <laughs> Football players Teddy Van Galen, Jack Doyle, Frank Denome, Robert Point Brien, and the baseball team, obviously, on the road fighting for a chance at an Empire 8 tournament berth. We thank you to our baseball seniors, Paul Joyce, J.T. Ross, Josh Call, and Dom Ketchiapoli, Jordan Hughes, Brian McGuire, and finally, Calypso Cardi from women's basketball. So let's give them a round of applause. And a round of applause for all of our student senior athletes. At this time, we would like to recognize this year's Kiwanis Senior Student Athlete Award winners. Now, this award is given to the most outstanding male and female student athletes based on performance in the classroom, community involvement, and athletic accomplishments. A panel of coaches and administrators from Utica College voted and selected the best suitable male and female candidates. As I call your name, would you please come to the stage to accept your award? This year's female Kiwanis Award winner is a senior on the UC women's lacrosse team, Rebecca Plunkett. <laughs> Rebecca is a nursing major here at UC. She was a two-time Empire 8 all-conference selection and is awaiting a third all-conference pick after another outstanding spring here. She currently ranks third all-time at Utica College in career points and goals. She also ranks second all-time in draw controls. She helped guide the Pioneers to 36 wins the last four seasons. The 2017 Kiwanis Senior Student Athlete Male Award winner is Kevin Kirasitz from the UC Men's Hockey and Golf Teams. Kevin is a risk management major here at UC. He was a three-time ECAC Men's West All-Academic Team selection and the program's all-time leader with 108 career games played. He led the Pioneers to two ECAC West regular season titles 
and three ECAC West Championship game appearances in four seasons. Kevin was a two-year captain on the defensive end and an ECAC West All-Conference pick in 2017. Following the season, he played professional hockey in the SPHL and plans on returning to pro hockey next season. He had so many accomplishments, he got his award and already sat down and had another drink. Tonight's second award presentation is also the athletic department's newest award. The Greg Roberts Senior Athlete Award was endowed in 2014 in honor of Greg Roberts, a longtime Utica College Athletic Department employee who passed away in 2013. The Greg Roberts Award is given annually to a male and female senior student athlete that best exemplifies what Greg Roberts stood for, hard work, unselfishness, loyalty, and passion for Utica College athletics. We welcome now Donna Roberts to the stage to help hand out the fourth annual Greg Roberts Award. A panel of coaches and administrators selected two student athletes for this award. As I announce your name, would you please come forward to accept it? This year's female Greg Roberts Award winner is a two-sport athlete at Utica College on field hockey and women's lacrosse teams, Colleen Dowling. Colleen was a three-time Empire 8 all-conference selection in field hockey, including a first-team selection as a senior. She finished her senior field hockey campaign tied for the team lead in points and collected a team-best nine assists. She ranks seventh all-time in total points and fourth in career assists in field hockey. Colleen was also a standout player on the women's lacrosse team and was named the 2016 Women's Lacrosse Sportswoman of the Year. The male award winner of the Greg Roberts Award is the college's all-time leading rusher on the football team, Ryan Burnett. <laughs> Ryan was an Empire 8 all-conference second team pick in 2016 and has helped lead UC to an ECAC bowl game in two out of the last three seasons. In his senior season, he finished second in the Empire 8 with an average of 90.5 yards rushing per, per game. Per game. And this past season, he broke the college's single season record with 995 yards rushing and helped Utica to three wins over ranked opponents this fall. Congratulations. At this time, we would like to honor the 2017 Richard Dick Millard Award recipients. Now, since 1987, the Dick Miller Award has been presented annually to a deserving male and female student athlete. Recipients are chosen by a panel of coaches and administrators on the basis of demonstrated character, community involvement, and athletic accomplishments. These ap athletes represent what Dick Miller stood for, courage, perseverance, integrity, and the spirit of competition. This year, two student athletes will be honored as the Dick Miller Award winners. As I announce your name, would you please come forward to accept your award? For this year's first female award winner is senior criminal justice major Gabrielle Schnepp of the women's hockey team. <laughs> Gabby earned multiple postseason awards during, including first team all conference third team all USCHO and third team all region by d3hockey.com in 2016. She ranks third on the college's all-time list with 72 career assists and ranks fourth all-time with 116 points in 109 career games. She helped guide Utica to 64 career victories in four seasons, earning an ECAC West Conference tournament appearance in each year. Congratulations. The male recipient of the Dick Miller Award is senior linebacker Jawan Wilson of the UC football team. 
Jawan was a three-time Empire Eight All-Conference selection for the Pioneers, and this season he surpassed Hall of Famer Marcus Maroney for second place on the college's all-time tackles list. He was also named an ECAC All-Star this past season. Jawan led the Empire Eight in tackles per game in 2015, and he helped guide UC to 21 wins over the course of his four-year career. Congratulations, Jawan. And now for tonight's final Senior Student Athlete Award. The Jim Doc Spartano Outstanding Senior Athlete Award was established five years ago to recognize senior athletes who have consistently exhibited the educational goals of Utica College, teamwork, leadership, loyalty, perseverance, and sportsmanship. The goals are the foundation on which Jim Spartano built his Hall of Fame career as an athletic director and coach at UC. The selection committee has chosen two individuals as the recipients of this award. As I announce your name, would you please come forward to accept your award? This year's Jim Spartano Female Award winner is Kiara Gowen of the UC women's hockey team. <laughs> Kiara is a public relations major and the goaltender for the Pioneers. She graduates as the program's record holder in wins and shutouts. She also owns the single season shutout record with seven. Gowen was consistently among the top goalies in the country in save percentage and goals against average throughout her career. She was a two-time ECAC West All-Conference selection and an all-rookie team pick following her freshman season. Congratulations. The male award recipient of the Jim Spartano Award is three-sport athlete Eric Winberg of the cross-country track and field teams. Winberg is a two-time Empire 8 all-conference selection, and he's also earned Coaches Association all-academic honors in 2017. He finished first in the 1,000-meter race at the ECAC Indoor Championships in 2017 and second at the Empire 8 Championships in the mile in past indoor season. Winberg has helped guide UC track and field to two consecutive Empire 8 Outdoor Track and Field Team Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give one final round of applause to our Senior Student Athlete Award winners. I would now like to welcome back to the stage Rebecca Plunkett, a senior in the women's lacrosse team. She'll give keynote remarks on behalf of the graduating senior athletes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rebecca Plunkett, and I've been a student athlete on the women's lacrosse team at Utica for the last four years. I can't tell you how much of an honor and privilege it is to speak to you and share some of my thoughts and experiences. Being a student athlete at Utica College has had such a positive impact on my life. When I came to Utica College on my first visit with Coach Saint, I heard the word family used over and over. I even found myself talking about family in my recent recruiting video displayed. I feel privileged to have been a part of Utica women's lacrosse family these last four years and will cherish the memories that I've played, that I've had forever because of the group of girls I've played with. When I reflect upon my time at UC, an important quote comes to mind. It never gets easier, you get better. This quote has helped me focus on the process and the work required to be successful in accomplishing the goals on and off the lacrosse field. Throughout my college career, I've learned that success doesn't just happen by chance. The process is the daily hard and smart work that leads to the goals you want in life. This has been a quote that I followed throughout my sports career, even as a little girl. My experience here at Utica has taught me that no accomplishment is achieved without commitment and dedication. The challenges on and off the field at Utica have made me more determined to excel, succeed, and hopefully become a contributing individual to society. Having a positive attitude is essential to overcoming adversity in the sports in our daily lives. I have learned many important lessons by being a student at, athlete at UC. The first is the amount of self-discipline necessary to compete at your best. Ultimately, your self-discipline has a direct effect on achieving your goals. Personally, this was a tough lesson for me to learn. In the beginning of my academic career, I faltered when facing challenges and did not get the results that I had hoped for. It took me a while to learn that hope doesn't yield triumph, but rather it's your actions taken that achieve success. 
In addition, second chances can be a saving grace, providing an opportunity to correct your mistakes. I also learned how to balance responsibility. As student athletes, we are pulled in many directions. We have a strong commitment to our academics, athletics, family, and friends. Finding the time for all of it can seem very overwhelming. Being faced with this so-called bump in the road, I learned that there, is, there are consequences for not managing your time appropriately. Another valuable life lesson I will take away from my experience here at UC is learning how to lose. Of course, no one likes losing, but as athletes, what sets us apart from all others is we learn to support each other when times are tough, to help each other up when we fall, and to rely on our team, our family, when things don't go our way. I always valued when Coach Saint talked about how the game was about our team. It didn't matter who was out there or who scored the goal. We are one unit. I think this is a very important lesson because even when you run up against a team who scores more than you, you have your team to lean on and fall back on to help each other. So as we approach graduation and enter the real world, it is important that we learn from our experiences here at UC. Manage your time wisely and don't forget what truly is important in life. When you fail, use your support system to hold you up, and lastly, give someone that second chance they may desperately need. In closing, I'd very like my ch to thank Coach Saint, who's pushed me to be the best player I can on and off the field. And thank you for dealing with my many injuries that I've had over the last four years, always asking if I could stay safe with a protective bubble. We all know that never happened. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank my family, friends, teammates, and the faculty at UC for their support, advice over the last four years. You've all played a tremendous role and my accomplishments, and I will always be grateful for you. I hope all of you are able to reach the goals you set in life and enjoy the journey along the way. Take with you the lessons learned and know you will always have your UC family. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the president of Utica College, Dr. Laura Casamento. Good evening, everyone. I am so pleased that all of you could be with us tonight and celebrate the remarkable past and present that is Utica College Athletics. I also am very aware that I'm the only thing standing between many of you and the pub party afterwards. To our graduating senior athletes, congratulations. Thank you for representing Utica College as well as you have over the past four years. Rebecca, you articulated wonderfully what the experience meant to you and your fellow athletes and how proud you were to wear Utica on the front of your jersey. I hope you know how proud we all are of you. You have exemplified all that we expect from a UC student athlete. You have competed with integrity. You have embraced the values of teamwork and leadership. You have exhibited perseverance, selflessness, and loyalty. You have pushed yourselves and those around you to the outermost limits of your, of your abilities. You have brought pride and joy to all members of the UC community. And on a personal note, I cannot possibly express in words how much I'm going to miss watching all of you from the stands. I know I speak for many others in this room when I say that. It's been an absolute pleasure to watch you play. To our newest Pioneer Hall of Famers, Tom, Marcus, Joe, and Katie, I welcome you into a highly selective circle with profound gratitude for your contributions, both on the playing field and off. The Utica College community is extraordinarily fortunate to have dedicated student athletes, coaches, and mentors who drive to excel, and to drive to excel benefits not only to a particular team, but to Utica College as a whole. So in closing, I want to congratulate all of you again for this well-deserved recognition. It's been an absolute privilege to honor you tonight. Thank you.
Thank you, President Casamento. And as a final reminder, please join us immediately after tonight's event at the Pioneer Pub in the Strebel Student Center as we host a post-event gathering as we continue this great celebration. This concludes our program this evening. I want to thank everyone for participating in tonight's event. Have an enjoyable and safe evening, and congratulations. <laughs>